All right, welcome everybody to our May 4th Star Wars Day <laughs> um, edition of the Imperial Teaching and Learning Call. And um, today we're going to have a, a sneak peek at some of the development that's been happening with the new meetings tool that's going to be in Sakai 23. So that should be really cool. Um, ADF is here to show us um, what they've got working so far. So definitely looking forward to that. Um, first, though, we'll start off with a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Sakai 21.3 was released last week. So um, depending on what version you are, if you were waiting for that dot release, it's available now. So, um, so that is out. And um, also SakaiCon registration is open. Um, I put the link there in the Etherpad. The um, registration is free. Um, it's going to be a primarily online event, but there's also going to be a watch party at um, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dr. Chuck is hosting a watch party there at U University of Michigan. So if you wanted to meet up with folks in person, you have that option. Um, but all the content will be online because you just never know with the pandemic if people are going to be able to travel. So we didn't want to make a lot of arrangements locally and then have to cancel stuff. So. Um, so we're going to have a primarily online event, but again, a watch party in Ann Arbor for those that uh, would like to travel. So, um, all right. Does anybody else have any other uh, announcements? Okay, yeah, we'll take that silence as a new announcements. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, give it over to Miguel. Should I give you screen share? I think Roberto will screen share. Roberto, okay. Is, is he allowed presenter. to do it? Or? He should be. I just gave him presenter. So um, let me assist him. Wait. Hi, do you see my, my screen? Yes, we're seeing okay. the big blue. OK, now we see Sakai Meetings Tool PowerPoint. OK, here, here it is. Great. Uh, Miguel, do you, have, do you want to say something or? Yep. Um... Uh, one second. <laughs> uh... Because we have echo. Uh... I would like to introduce to you Roberto, which is one of the newer EDF and the Sakai community developers since December. Um, I know Roberto for a long time, I think since 2009. Uh, he has right now like 14 years of experience in Java and the um, Sakai technology stack. So he's pretty familiar with the technologies. So for that reason, since December, he was able to 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 be ready for the Sakai development, he succeeded with the learning curve and he was ready to, you know, to start contributing things. And this is his second piece of work right now. He started working on the dashboard tool and right now, the, and after that, he started working on the meetings tool and he did um, a great job because he combined a, a modern, the new generation UI with with the um, with the Java technology and, and the, the Sakai stack, and he's gonna he's gonna show show you the the progress on the meetings tool and, and the current state of it. And if you have any question, just let us know. You can use the chat. I'm gonna moderate the chat or or, or even Wilma, and we're gonna attend questions at the, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so Roberto, go on. Okay, thank you, Miguel. <laughs> Uh, well, um, uh, well, this is the uh, the meeting tool we have been working on. I'm going to show you uh, what's uh, been in development here in here at EDF. So, well, we can start. Uh, well, uh, the um, the main goal of this of this tool of the meeting tool is to create and schedule new meetings for for students uh, by the instructors. 
um, these these new uh, the, uh, these new, uh, meetings are the, the access to these meetings are controlled by uh, by site or by group or uh, the participants uh, that are that can attend the, the meeting are uh, selected by, by by all participants on the site or by by group. Um, and then these students can access uh, the meetings they ha they have been invited to participate uh, in the main screen of the of the tool uh, with a list where we can see here an example of the main interface of the of the tool uh, as we as as you can see um, the interface is um, is rendered by by uh, cards or meeting cards uh, that we uh, we are going to explain uh, later. Um, well, uh, the features of the tool will uh, include to search for the meetings uh, the students have. Uh, these meetings can be added as events on the site uh, calendar, on the Sakai calendar. And when the, uh, when the meetings are scheduled and created by the instructors, uh, these, 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 uh, all the participants can be notified by, by email uh, about the creation of these meetings. Uh, the main goal of the of the tool was to create a, a simple and fast uh, and visual interface uh, with a good looking appeal. Uh, and well, I think we have succeeded at that. <laughs> uh, the what well, we are going to talk to talk about the design and interface. Uh, this is the main screen of the of the tool. As, uh, as I've said before, uh, this is a structure uh, with the well, the main the main object in here is the meeting cards. We have here um, uh, all of the meetings are represented by these cards, and they are sorted and ordered by by time. We have uh, three sections. We can see two of them here in the in the screen. Uh, there's a today section in which we have the, the meetings that are scheduled and planned for, for today, as, as, the, it, as, as its names uh, uh, tell us. <laughs> uh, then we have a future section. We have not, we are not seeing here in the screen, but uh, there's a section about the future uh, meetings. And then there's a list of uh, past, uh, a summary of the past meetings uh, we had. Um, in this screen, um, instructors can create new meetings with this, this button we see uh, above, above the screen. We can search uh, uh, meetings by writing here on the box, uh, in the search box. Uh, well, the interface is so, is so simple as you can see, as you can see here. Um, about the meeting cards, uh, the goal here was to, to have a simple um, and clear information about the meeting in a visual way um, we can we can see uh, uh, well all the cards have the title of the meeting uh, we can see here the time and the date uh, when the when the the meeting starts and we can see the state of or if it if, if it is live it's uh, currently being uh, well in the, if the meeting is is at this time or when it starts uh, as we can see in this other in this other card, um, we can ha we, we have uh, a link here with view description. This link opens a window, and you can see a short description about the meeting. And the other section here is a list of avatars of the of the participants that are invited to to join the the, the meeting. Um, and then we have a, a button uh, here that is enabled to access the meeting when the meeting is, is live, but is disabled when the meeting is uh, scheduled for uh, for other date uh, in the future. Okay. Um, then we have uh, here uh, a button that is that opens a contextual menu uh, where instructors can access the options to edit or remove the uh, or delete the. The, the meetings. This is only visible for instructors. Uh, students cannot see this button. They only see the, the card and they only can uh, join the meeting and the view, view the description of the meeting. Uh, well, uh, about the creation of and um, editing of meetings, we have well, when you access uh, the meeting by this button or when you can 
or you to access uh, the edit uh, link here, uh, the instructor access here. Then there's the the form, uh, well, the screen of uh, edit uh, meeting opens. This is a simple form. Uh, the goal here was uh, again to be uh, a simple interface, uh, um, easy to use, uh, with a fast and visual interface and responsive interface. Uh, in this, well, in this uh, screen, we can um, edit all the information related to the meeting. Um, as we can see here, well, this this form is interactive, and when you uh, click on the arrows, uh, then uh, the section displays. Um, you can access the, all the fields to 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 define uh, the meeting. We can see here the availability uh, section of the of the form when you can uh, select the open uh, date of and the close date of the meeting, and then we have here a, a checkbox to add uh, the meeting to the Sakai Sakai calendar. Um, when you uh, uh, about this, uh, the, the integration with the calendar. Uh, when you click on this and you check uh, this this checkbox and you and you say the meeting, then we have in the calendar uh, automatically uh, created the, the event as a event type meeting. Uh, uh, well, this is the 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 calendar event of type meeting. When we edit uh, or, um, uh, some information about the, if we have uh, we have added the event to, uh, to the meeting to an event on the calendar, and we change the information about this event, this updates automatically here in the calendar as well. Um, and well, uh, about the integration with the providers of the, um, well, we we currently support. Uh, the Microsoft Teams integration. This is the, pro the video conferencing provider in we, we have supported uh, now. Um, and this integration uh, controls uh, who can access the meetings. Um, only members of the organization can access the meetings uh, we create uh, in the meetings tool. Uh, this is controlled by the email of the participants because all participants in Sakai uh, has to be has to well, they have to have the the email uh, the same email in the login of Microsoft Teams. This is uh, how we control the the access to to the to the meetings. Um, and well, only members of the organization can access the meetings, but uh, if we, we, the organizer of the meeting, uh, the instructor that created the meeting is set as the organizer of the meeting, and he can also invite uh, some external users to to the to the meeting. But he has to approve their uh, they to log in in the in the meeting. We can see all of this in a quick demo uh, about the functionality working on my local instance of Sakai. Um, uh, we have going here. Well, this is my this is my Sakai. I am uh, logged as an instructor. Uh, this is Carl Jäger. I present you Carl Jäger. <laughs> this is the instructor I have here. Um, well, this is the main the main page as I told before. Uh, we have here the, the today's section. Uh, a future section. This is a this is a meeting we have for well in in 17 hours, and he, we have here the past uh, section. Then we can search here for for some uh, some meetings by writing here. As you can see, it uh, refreshes automatically while I am uh, I am uh, writing. So it's a fast interface. Um, and well, as I as I said before, uh, if I click here and view description, I can we can see uh, here the little description of, of of the of the meeting. And well, we we can create a new meeting by clicking here. Uh, well, I want to create a demo meeting, for example. We can create here a short. This is a demo meeting. 
a short uh, description. Well, if, if there, there are some, some fields that are mandatory, if I, if I remove this text, we have here an advice to this to be filed out, and we cannot save until we all, all, all fields are valid. So we, can, we need to write here, and this button is enabled. Uh, while I am while I am writing the more meeting uh, the video conferencing as I said before we only support uh, we only currently only support Microsoft Teams so I, we can select anything anything more uh, this is selected by default and then in the participant section we have two options here we can uh, uh, invite to all participants from the site or we can select uh, some groups for for the um, for the meeting we can select one or two or, or uh, well, the the groups we need well i am going to select this group for example for ludovic group i have this group with only one person ludovic and then we have here the availability section uh, this this is filled automatically well when you enter the the form it's automatically set as the current time and the close date one hour later but we can select the time and date we want with the picker or we can write mm, the hour we we want uh, with the keyboard and then uh, we have uh, data uh, if if I if I put here some uh, um, dates that are not past the validation, if I have here a, a, a date a close date before the open date, this is not valid and we cannot save as well. Okay, but this is enabled when the validation is uh, when the problem is fixed. If I click here on the checkbox to add a meeting to the calendar, uh, we're going to, have to check uh, in order to be to, to see uh, the calendar event. And then the last the last section is the notification sections. Here we can uh, send no notification to anyone, or we can send a notification to all participants of the of the site. Uh, well, outside of the site, no, uh, the, the participants, we are selected here. Um, we are not going to send an notification because it's, this is a demo, this is a demo and there's, there are no <laughs> real, real users. And then we can save, we can save the meeting. And then we have it uh, here as a card, okay? If we go to the calendar, uh, we can see the demo meeting I created is is scheduled to the time I I, I put when I wrote. Uh, if we return here, then we can edit this meeting. We can change the we can change a little the the description the description. Uh, we can change the participants of the site, for example, or the time. If we can put, we can put here to start at six until eight and then uh, if we return here to the calendar this has been updated automatically uh, so this is the integration with the calendar um, okay uh, well uh, we can also remove the the meeting by clicking here and the delete meeting we are we have this advice and then we we'll just uh, remove uh, the, uh, the meeting and it simply works and then uh well uh, now we can join the meeting with the uh, with this button i'm going to explain the the integration with the microsoft microsoft teams um if we click here well uh first of all i have installed my microsoft teams account uh, uh, in here, I'm logged as Maximilian. This is a user we have in Sakai with this email. Uh, it corresponds to this user in here. So if I join the meeting and um, I open in, well, this is in, in Spanish, okay, but uh, if I open this on Microsoft Teams, I can 
uh, log into the meeting with, uh, without any problem. Um, I'm, I'm inside the meeting uh, right now as Maximilian, okay? But uh, potentially uh, every, every person that has this link uh, can access the, the meeting, but if, if the organizer of the meeting uh, wanted to, to share this with external uh, people, uh, people with this not inside the organization, external users, you can, uh, you can send them the, this link and access this. But what, what happens if we do that? Uh, well, uh, if I access here in the browser, in the browser I'm not logged in, 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 micro, in Microsoft Teams, if I click here to continue in this in this browser, uh, well, the, uh, we are not uh, uh, members of the organization, so we are guests. Uh, we can put uh, any any name we we want. For example, John Doe. We can access like John Doe. And what happens then? Uh, what happens is uh, that we need the organizer organizer permission to uh, to access the, the meeting. We can try to do this by well uh, in Microsoft in Microsoft Teams. If I log out with the student and I access as the organizer, we can access like Carl Jäger, that is the organizer of the meeting. When when Carl is logged, and we try to access the meeting, uh, what happens? Uh, well, here, if I join the meeting and open it in Microsoft Teams. Then I am the, the, I am the organizer, I join the meeting, and we have an advice here to uh, accept, uh, well, we have in the waiting room, we have a John Doe. We can see this uh, waiting room, and we can see that we can accept or deny uh, the joining of John Doe to the, to the meeting. We can, we're going to deny it because we don't know who the hell <laughs> he is. And then uh, this, uh, this person can't access the, the meeting, okay? So, well, mm, in summary, this is mm, the main functionality of the meetings tool. Um, in the future, well, uh, the compatibility, uh, well, is uh, we are working to to with Sakai 21 and higher, uh, higher versions. Currently, we are working uh, reviewing the compatibility with Sakai 20 because there are some issues with dependencies of older libraries on, and tools. So we are working now on on this and um, to polish some other other. But well, the main the main job is done about the about the tool. But we are working on this in this. Uh, these are the technologies we are being using uh, with uh, to, to build uh, to develop the the tool. We have the Microsoft Graph API from Microsoft Teams with for Microsoft Teams integration, and these all other technologies to to implement the the application the tool for Sakai. And about the roadmap and next steps, uh, Miguel could tell you uh, tell you more about this. Uh, Miguel, if you if you want. Yeah, I would like to talk a little bit about, about the roadmap and about the the progress we've made. So, I mean, all of this project was done um, using Aperio funds. So everything was sponsored by Aperio, and uh, <clears throat> the designs of the meetings tool. Uh, was done was done by by the designs were done by a designer um wilma which is here provided us the designs so we didn't create the ui or the user experience it was there was some research and some work done by the, a designer so the designer provided everything uh, in terms of user experience etc and uh, this was a good experience because uh, multiple people contributed to the to the meetings too like um, a group of people contributed with the front end, with the user experience, and Roberto integrated everything with the back end and the Microsoft services. So the user experience was, was created following the designs, and at the same time, all the accessibility tests uh, was done before completing the development. So let's say that the UI and the, the user experience was created, 
Um, it implemented unit tests to, to verify that the behavior is correct. And at the same time, we perform accessibility tests working with the accessibility group. So we guaranteed that the, uh, that the uh, interface was, was accessible. After that, uh, Roberto started with the integration of the backend. And uh, right now, the, um, the meetings tool is, is close to the, to the first, to the first, uh, to the first release. Okay. Also, the backend includes unit testing. So at the end, the, the, the front is well tested and, and the backend is well tested automatically. But, but at the same time, uh, we want a lot of feedback from the user perspective because because at the end users um, can start testing and providing feedback. So right now um, we are in we 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 want to deliver um, the meetings tool to the to the Sakai community, and we want to spend some time on improving the documentation, especially around technology and at the same time adoption. Because if an institution wants to deploy the the meetings tool and start using it or or evaluating it, um, the 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 more documentation, the better. Uh, especially configuring all the Microsoft tenant um, um, keys and secrets to 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 start using the tool in the organizations. So for that reason, right now it's a country project, so institutions can can take it and and, and start using it. And the reason why it's a contrib tool right now is because we didn't want to introduce many dependencies with with Sakai versions because backports are always are always a problem. So we wanted to to make the tool compatible with 21, 22, and future versions of Sakai. And we're evaluating if it can work with Sakai 20. So that's the reason why it's a contrib. But the contribution to Sakai Master may happen soon. Okay, so depending on discussions and the feedback, um, the contribution to the to Sakai Master is going to happen soon. So right now uh, is an MVP, and we want feedback from institutions about the tool. And 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 we suspect that um, the Microsoft institutions are a subset of all the Sakai institutions, because all institutions are with Google or or other. Uh, or other, you know, organizations. Um, one important aspect in terms of security is the last piece that Roberto was talking about. Um, the let's say the Microsoft services and the API supports groups, but Sakai groups and Microsoft groups are different. And right now, we not many organizations have um, a close integration between Sakai groups. And, and Microsoft Groups. So as we wanted to create a straightforward product and, uh, and a good MVP, we made a decision around the membership. And that decision was that the meeting is owned by, by the instructor. And right now, the instructor approves people manually. Because as I said, um, there's no integration with the API, like providing all the members of the site to the, the, the Microsoft team object. So as we don't have all the information from other Microsoft institutions, we decided to do it in this way. So basically the institutions can use it um, from, from the first day, but the, the con or the negative part is that all the students are not provided to Microsoft Teams, only the instructor, and, and they need to approve users manually. This is going to change, but again, it's related to Microsoft membership because in the case of Zoom or Big Blue Button, it's completely different, you know, um, a strategy. Okay. Also, in 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 the future, once this is in master, there's a strategy around, um, you know, sharing objects like conversations or or the dashboard or rubrics. So we are thinking about sharing the meetings objects. Uh, we call it the meeting card, OK? So basically, we envision that we can extract the meeting card and embed the, a meeting card into lessons or maybe conversations or maybe the chat. I don't know the technical details yet, but we envision that instructors can share a meeting card across tools or maybe 
at 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 global level okay and finally as wilma said i mean depending on conversations and discussions etc um, all of this all of this integration was created following some rules and contributions from Lounsite and Adrian Fish related to providing multiple um, video conference providers. So basically the tool has a generic um, meeting provider. And one of the implementation is the Microsoft Teams, which is one of the meeting providers. So in the future, right now there's a selector where you can select the provider and it's disabled because you can only use Microsoft Teams. But in the future, you can use other systems. One of the possible candidates will be Zoom, and another one will be this system, which is Big Blue Button. Okay. So, anything else, I guess? So, if you have any question, you can you can contact the people in the Sakai user list or the dev list, or even if you need you know private information or or you need a private discussion you can contact our sakai girls at etf.global all right that was awesome thank you miguel and roberto um it, it's looking really great um can't wait to see it working and it's exciting that people who want to adopt it earlier um can do so you don't have to wait for the 23 release. You can go ahead and, and start using it, testing it, improving it, um, you know, if you're on uh, 21 or higher. So that's that's definitely some news there for adoption. Um, does anybody have any questions? You guys are super quiet. Do we have any folks here that use Teams? Yeah, I'm a, we're a Microsoft Teams school. Um, and I am curious as to uh, when you were showing the, the uh, external version of it, um, you could then, it, it, do you have to go to the external, uh, to the Microsoft Teams itself to like add a guest? We also use Zoom here too, so actually a lot more Zoom than we do Teams, but um, just want your feedback on that. Didi, you mean when, when, when you connect as a guest? Uh, when uh, so let's just say a faculty member is having a, a guest speaker in, um, is that invitation done through the LMS to the through the meetings? No, you can share the link. You can just share the link. Okay, Correct. that's curious. Okay, thank you. Correct. But when, when you create when you create a, a Teams object in Microsoft using the API, um, basically you can provide other Microsoft accounts or even external accounts. But right now, um, I mean, there are many Sakai services like OneDrive, Microsoft Streams, and other services. Mm -hmm. And you can have groups in Microsoft and you can have groups in Sakai. But right now, there's no, let's say, really, really complete integration between Sakai groups and, 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 and Microsoft groups. And that is, is kind of complex because the institution needs to be Microsoft. And it depends on the Microsoft configuration. If, if because some institutions may not use Microsoft groups, maybe. So we decided that the owner is gonna be the instructor, and 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 is you know has control over the meeting. That can you know allow guests, can allow that makes uh, sense. Students, etc. So right now is is an MVP that can work, and in the future, exploring the API and exploring Microsoft institutions cases. Maybe we can improve the Microsoft integration, like, I don't know, providing groups, providing students, because all of them have a Microsoft account. Because sometimes, I mean, institutions authenticate using Microsoft services, or sometimes they authenticate using Sakai local 
uh, accounts or sometimes they use you know active directory or i mean there are many many combinations mm -hmm. so we want the information before making a decision okay uh, the functionality right now is that uh, the the owner of the of the of the of the meeting is the is the instructor and every every person in the organization uh, uh, can access uh, well, all uh, all people in the organization that has an email uh, created on the Microsoft uh, portal. Uh, they can access the meetings created for this institution. But uh, external users can access only if the organizer accepts them, as I showed in the in the demo. Uh, when you access, when you click on the join meeting uh, button, uh, uh, a new, a new, a new window in the, a new tab in the explorer opens, and the the direct, the address, uh, the internet address that appears above, you can share this, and with that address, external members could uh, try to access to to the meeting, but only the organizer. If if someone do that, uh, only the organizer can accept them for joining to the, to the meeting. That's the control we have for now. Thank you for answering my questions. That was really uh, very enlightening. A lot of work was done here that it's, it's evident uh, how much has been thought through so far. Really, can I congratulate you for good work, really good work. Thank you. I mean, one, Thank of, you. The big, one of the big challenges we have right now is the testing, just because it's not easy to make a, pu a public Microsoft tenant, you know, available for everyone. So. I still don't know if how we're going to test this and verify that everything's working fine. I mean, we verified locally, <laughs> but I believe that as a community, we should, I don't know, enable a Microsoft tenant and allows, I don't know if a specific period of time, you know, for the, for everybody to, to play with it. I don't know the details yet. If we do have any Microsoft schools um, that are interested in helping QA, well, that would be super helpful. Yeah, that's what I, uh, I, I thought, because at the end you can enable the tool in a specific set of subsites or, or small set of sites and make a small pilot. But you definitely need uh, a Microsoft tenant because you need to create an application, you know, provide and authorize the application to access your institution and configure in, in the Sakai side. So that's something we can't we can't do it in Nile servers. I think I don't know yet, but I'll definitely Great. ask my uh, my my teams and see what they say. Great, thanks, TD. Here's my <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> Since you guys do a lot of QA anyway, it'd be nice to be able to test it out. We do. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions right now? Looks like no questions, although there's some kudos there in the in the chat. People seem to like it, so um, it, yeah, it's definitely great work. So thank you guys for um, demoing this and for doing all the work to get it to this point. So um, once we get it out there in the wild, we'll start to get more feedback on on the little tweaks that are needed still. 
Um, but I think it's a great start for an MVP. All right. Well, um, thanks again to Miguel and Roberto for um, for doing the demo for us here today. And it looks like I, I'm not seeing any Jira's listed in our Etherpad. Um, does anyone have any Jira's that they would like to discuss? We have about 15 minutes left. No one has a Jira that they want to talk about. We can always end early. Um. That is I'm an instructor of you. Let me go ahead and put that in our already did. Let me I'll I'll do screen share just so we have something to look at. All right, so this Jira, OK, um, allow an instructor to quickly navigate to the next or previous assignment, similar to how they can grade the next or previous student. Interesting one. Um, OK, so background is as an instructor, I must click grade or view submissions to see the student names. If I want to go directly to the next assignment, I have to go back to the assignment list. Um, so the idea is to have a next assignment button there. And there's a screenshot assignment. I'll navigate assignments grouping there. And this is, yes, I mean, was actively grading multiple assignments. Um, look at some of these other ones. Okay, so that's one we saw. I guess they're just different versions of the same thing. Okay, um, so what do people think about this uh, feature request? seem useful? He says notice the versions. What are the versions? Uh, the mm -hmm. effects version, I saw it there. 12, 12 and 19. But those images are from later versions, so I don't Yeah, this was in know. 2021. This was a fairly recent image. Yeah, that's why I was saying notice the versions. It just seemed a little off. Yeah. Um, huh. Interesting. But I mean, I know when I've graded, um, I usually grade one assignment at a time. But if, if others or instructors are using this where they're going through and looking for a particular person as they grade or um, or just going from one to the other, I don't think it's a, it's a high option, uh, but do other people want to chime in? Because I do know that when people are grading uh, in the, um, if you could go to that screenshot for just a second, uh, I know when people One. are are grading, they have the assignment list. Because um, right now, if they're looking at a sample assignment, one, they're looking at the student list. There's more underneath that page. Um, the uh, next assignment. Oh, you do like it, Jennifer. Chime in. If you can. I 
do like the idea of getting one less click out of the way so you can go back without having to go back to the main listing as well. Yeah, I would, the only thing I would worry about is I would want to see it in context with like the current buttons that would be in that screen to make sure it doesn't mm -hmm. look too busy. That would be my only. I don't want people to get confused between next student and next assignment. Right, that's what, uh, and it it looks like it would be that way, where the same yeah, area of looks, the screen, because when you're grading, you have that next person, next person, next person, so we just have to be clear on the. Yeah, the this mock-up isn't, this is like from the download all. Screen, yeah. So it's hard to visualize. Land of a course. Dave, what do you think? Christina? Here's a demo uh, course. If I uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an instructor, but it's maybe more interesting to have a, let's say, a selector of assignments. You can search through the title. So instead of going next or previous, you can you can see other assignments and you can go directly to the list of submissions. I don't know. I'm not an instructor. Yeah, so this is the greater interface right now. So right now there's a return to list and there's arrows for next and previous. Which are too tiny. <laughs> yeah, but I just I worry about yeah. having another grouping up here that it might be a little too much. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's yeah, where would that fall? So if this is our assignment list, so if you click on assignments again, um, so we have all the list of assignments. We don't have, the only thing we have there is the, the, the assignment list that has the, you know, next, previous, and, and next. And that interface there where the, um, where we have the viewing one of two items, that look, that layout idea, that uh, on the right-hand navigation over there, that's what I would expect to see something similar to. Yeah, so that was that screenshot was from this page because it's got the download all links. Right. There. Um. So next assignment is I I can see where they'd want to instead of going oh, backwards this, to go forward. From this screen, not from the grading individual student mm -hmm. screen. But okay, makes, that makes I, more sense. Yeah. Wouldn't you also want to see, uh, you know, as on the screen we just saw, that the interface, the the buttons that are used, I would love to see those also in that uh, in the grader, the similar layout of the buttons. So um, when you go, so this layout here, something similar you would to the prefer actually to see that in the grader. Yeah, closer to that, or what was shown mm -hmm. on the last screen that you just looked at had the, you know, uh, all the way to the end. Um, selection choices so yeah i like the the buttons with previous and next spelled out yeah because i think that also see. works for um for accessibility yeah uh, accessible and easier to to see because the other ones are slightly small uh especially when grading yes so I found I would want small. I would want to see the same kind of thing, and I and I do agree with the. I mean, it would be nice to have the buttons be there for that on that last page on that assignment page, to have mm -hmm. that going to the next one, the next one, the next one. I don't think that's a bad thing. There is space for it, but we'd have to kind of delineate what is having to do with the student this assignment versus going to a next assignment as an as an interface. And those who code would probably also be able to give some feedback. A lot of call outs in the chat. Thanks, Dave. I think there should be a little more discussion about this, but I do think we can yeah. bring this up, up the food chain to have people look at it and get some more feedback. Yeah, definitely. I will add a comment on here showing that, um, you know, we talked about it and we um, 
liked the the larger buttons for previous and next and would want to see some consistency between previous and next student and previous and next assignment even though they're on different pages yep exactly thanks i will add that as a follow-up she rocks okay well it is 10 53 so if anybody has a quick JIRA that we can do in seven minutes, we can take a look um, or we can go ahead and wrap up. Not seeing anybody pasting in JIRAs, so I'm gonna assume that we'll just uh, wrap for today. Um, our next meeting is May 18th in two weeks. And I don't think we have <clears throat> a topic. Um, so if anybody has something that they would like to demo or a particular topic that you would like to discuss, um, feel free to, to let me or Dee Dee know um, that you'd like to add that to the schedule for next time. So um, the 18th is currently open if anyone wants to discuss a particular tool. And thanks again to EDF for showing us the meeting stuff. It's looking really good. So I'm excited about that. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll go ahead and, and end our meeting. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>